engaging celebrity interviews, exciting updates from Christian filmmakers, movie reviews so you can choose your movies wisely, and so much more here on Faith on Film with Isaac Hernandez and Holly McClure. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Faith on Hello. Film. Holly, I am so excited about today's show because we've got a very special we guest. We do, we do. I'm very excited to have our guest. Tell them all about him. Kevin Downs is a writer, producer, director, and co-founder and chief of production and distribution at Kingdom Story Company. Yes, and he's also an actor who I know you've seen in over 31 films. I can only imagine Courageous, Faith on Film, uh, Faith of the Faith of Our <laughs> Fathers, and so many others. And you know what? We are going to see a trailer of a movie he's now producing, and it's called Ordinary Angels. And we're excited to introduce you to it. Let's take a look at the trailer. My name is Sharon, and I'm an alcoholic with a split and headache. My advice, find a reason to be here that's bigger than you are. I read about this family in the paper. I think this is it. And we have a situation. And we all look pretty for mommy. Well, maybe just a little off the cheeks. God is here with us right now. And we are here with you. Something about that little girl without a mom sick and the family blood dry from all the hospital bills i think i'm supposed to help hi sharon yes ma'am i just wanted to come by and give you this i just made dinner if you want to stay would love to what are you doing i met this woman she's a mess perfect she'll fit right in Four hundred thousand plus in medical bills all three credit cards maxed out and your income's only 3600 a month yes ma'am that's not good ed no ma'am i'm gonna put together a press kit for a corporate donations that kind of thing smile girls help your daddy out <laughs> I've owned four small businesses. I'm good at plenty of things. Take a no for an answer ain't one of them. Daddy's no for his head. You're asking us to reduce the family's medical bills due to hardship. No, I'm asking you to erase them. All of them. Was that funny? Daddy! My belly hurts. Oh, you want to go on an adventure? Michelle will need to fly 700 miles to the Children's Hospital. Are you telling me we need a plane now? How exactly do you recommend we get a plane, Doc? I'll get you a plane, I promise. We are going to save this girl, you hear me? We're going to need a lot of shovels. This is our last chance. If we don't take it, Michelle dies. How did it become your responsibility to save her? Because I'm here. Because I can. Kevin, welcome to Faith on Film. Man, we're so excited to have you here. Holly and I, of course, have known we you for are. many years. So it's such a thrill. It, it, we are. Good to be old friends for a long time. But good to have you on talking about an amazing movie, right? It's good to be here. How are you guys? Oh, we're just enjoying this. And we love seeing the films, especially what Kingdom Story is doing. Mm -hmm. These films come along that everyone were going gosh we love this film we love this film and this is another one ordinary angels oh my gosh based on a true story I, i'm sorry to disappoint you guys like it just, <laughs> it's just like give you we give you films that you like jesus <laughs> revolution i mean we can, we've been reviewing your movies and praising all these movies for months and months so <laughs> thank you it's been fun <laughs> so working on ordinary why'd you guys decide to do this movie because it's based on a true story right but what compelled you guys to say yeah let's do this one you know this one has a very interesting um backstory uh you know um kingdom story company uh you know we're under a a first look deal at Lionsgate, and uh usually as you guys are well aware, that means we pitch things to Lionsgate and they say yes sometimes and they say no sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so with Ordinary Angels, this was a movie they pitched to us. Oh. And uh, that was the oh. origin of it. And we, we actually said no a couple of times because we were kind of confused why a studio was pitching us a story to make. Um, uh, but how the story came to existence 
<laughs> we realized, okay, God must be in this because it was there were there were things that seemed coincidental that weren't coincidental at all. And so um, I'll start with the origin of it, which uh, <clears throat> about ten, maybe ten years ago or so. Um, one of my producing partners on the film, a gentleman by the name of John Berg, uh, John's got incredible credits. Uh, his first movie ever was a little movie called Elf that he produced, uh, just, you know, tiny little movie. That- Love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every, every year. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, I'm like, wow, John, uh, uh, first movie Elf. Yeah, you just really failed out of the box. So way to go. Um, that's that was not true. The Elf is an incredible film. Um, and so John uh, found himself eventually as the co-president of production at Warner Brothers. And so he, um, knowing that uh, the studio system is a game of musical chairs, uh, was very astute to realize you know he wouldn't be in this position. You know, forever. And so he asked his assistant one day, he goes, hey, um, if you were to meet anybody in the world, uh, who would it be? And let's see if we can just get a meeting just for fun. Like, and he's thinking she'll say some actor. And uh, she says, I'd like to meet Dave Matthews. And he goes, the singer? And she goes, yeah, Dave Matthews. Like, I love his music. And he goes, okay, let's call Dave Matthews, see if he wants to come in. And so they called Dave Matthews and um, Dave took the meeting and he came in and, you know, John's thinking it's going to be a meet and greet and pictures and whatnot. Well, Dave Matthews had a different idea. He pitched this story. That's what Dave oh, Matthews oh. pitched. Oh, and, um, and, and so <laughs> Dave had come across this story, um, whether he saw it on the news media or whatnot, and figured out how to get the rights to it, and and pitched this story to John. Um, it wasn't right for Warner Brothers, but he John then turned around and pitched it to a good friend of his. Um, they started together at the same small little company, uh, a gentleman by the name of Nathan Kahane, and Nathan is president um, at Lionsgate at the Motion Picture Group. And so oh. Nathan fell in love with it, and it's like, well, okay, we got to figure out how to develop this movie, and so they took it on as a development project. And, um, you know, a little bit time later, uh, this little movie called I Can Only Imagine came along, which <laughs> John and Andy uh, made, and led to signing a deal at Lionsgate. And so, um, I, I mean, it wasn't long after we signed the deal that they pitched <clears throat> us this story because they were so passionate about it. So um, when the pandemic struck, we found ourselves uh, being pitched again, and then we decided to go, okay, let's look into this thing a little bit more. And when we saw what the story was, that it was one of the central sort of characters of it was this church, Southeast Christian Church in Louisville, Kentucky. We're like, wait a minute. Wow. Wait a minute. Our chairman <laughs> is like an elder at this church, and yes. we know Dave Stone. Like, Dave's, Dave's uh, a friend of ours. This is uh, crazy. <laughs> And so we called, before we said yes, we called Dave and said, is this true? Like, is this story true? And he goes, yeah, no, that story is totally true. And, um, and he didn't need to tell you about that before being friends. No, 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 we didn't know. We had no idea. And so, and then even um, our chairman, Tony Young, who's, who goes to the church, his home church, He's like, yeah, no, I remember it, but like, it was just so weird how it circled and then came back and took this long journey, eventually coming back to us. And so, um, uh, John Gunn, who uh, directed the film, he goes, you know what? I've got a take on this story. Let me write a script and, and write a version of this, at least. Um, uh, uh, Kelly Freeman Craig had a script and did a wonderful job, and then John did some uh, revisions to it. And, uh, and it was like, okay, I, this is a movie. Like, this is actually a movie that could be really timely. Um, um, yeah. Especially coming out of the pandemic where yeah. we, like, all need hope and we all want an example of a story where we're helping other human beings out to lift people up. Because yeah. um, isn't that what the gospel is all about, to be the hands and feet of Jesus? And, uh, and, and that's exactly what the story is. And so, um, love it for that. And though, so then it was about casting and getting the right cast. And when yeah. Swank said mm-hmm. yes, we're like, wait a minute, 
did she say yes? <laughs> she literally said yes to us. Oh my it's crazy. God. And then Alan Richardson signed on and he uh, had just wrapped season one of Reacher, um, you know, which was obviously a huge hit. But then since then, he has exploded. Exploded. And yeah. this man is everywhere. And so we really uh, got fortunate here. We had two big stars in our movie. Uh, that's coming out here February 23rd in theaters everywhere. How about that? I love it, and I love the whole backstory to it. And the yeah. fact that Hillary jumped on it, you know, I feel like this is her blind side, like what blind side was for Sandra Bullock. Oh. This is what it is for oh, Hillary no. because she has a whole different kind of character that you just don't really picture her doing, and yeah. she pulled it off beautifully. Um, and so I can see why she kind of jumped on this one. Did, did the people, did Alan and, and Hillary have to have any kind of a faith background for you to cast them? Or is that not how you guys cast for your movies and opera? I'm just curious because obviously you're dealing with a faith subject, you know? Yeah. Um, so for Hillary, uh, what led us to her is I stumbled upon an article that uh, I read online that she shared how she her father underwent a lung transplant and her father uh, being a devout Christian um, she decided to really start to care for her father after his lung transplant um, and I, that really touched me I'm like you know what and the main theme of our film one of the main themes it deals with organ transplants um, and I'm like this might just resonate with her and so i called john gunn and, and he's like you know what i was thinking the same thing why don't i write a letter and we'll just submit the script and hopefully she reads it and she did and it was exactly why she said yes it was the organ transplant um it, it meant so much to her and and her father and her father's faith um just being able to do something that in her mind um, honored her dad for the journey that he lived on for Alan, Alan is like a absolute on fire Christian. He's very open about his faith. You can find uh, he does this thing called Insta Church, where he does um, on YouTube. He'll do like Sunday church, and uh, um, and he's on. He's just totally on fire. He, I think he was on last week. Um, I had him and Jonathan Rumi on our prayer cast, and and uh, he, Alan kind of showed up as a surprise, but he just he gave his testimony. Dave, the real Dave Stone. Um, and I asked him some uh, amazing questions about his faith walk and his journey. And Alan pulled no punches and was very transparent and loved the man. What I love so much about him is, you know, he plays Reacher, this guy, this, this, this huge man, this, this bruiser. And, uh, and he's a big man. I, I'll, I'll say that. We actually asked him, uh, Gunn asked him to lose like 20 pounds of muscle. Uh, for this movie so that he just wasn't looking like the Incredible Hulk. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and so... Which he had to gain back to do Reacher 2. So well, yeah, well, I know, and he had to gain it back to do Fast 10, <laughs> which he flew from our set to, to Rome literally the next day oh, no. uh, to start work on Fast 10. So halfway through our production is when he got cast for Fast 10, and he wow. actually had to start bulking up while we were shooting. <laughs> so there's, there's certain movies, or there's certain scenes in our film where Alan just continues to get bigger and bigger. <laughs> it's kind of funny. God made him uh, stronger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Kevin, but what I love about him is he he is the most gentle spirit he you know inside that huge hulking man mm. uh, is this sweet soft spirit of a human being that just mm. loves people loves jesus with all of his heart and um and so uh, you know on, on set i'm like man we got to introduce you to the world here yeah. because people yeah. don't know wow. who you are as a as a man first and foremost they're gonna love your acting but they're gonna love who you are as a man so the fact that he has joined us now on two prayer cast calls, uh, Zooms, and people have gotten to kind of meet him for a minute and who he is has been really special. Kevin, do you find that maybe it's no longer as much of a career killer for these Hollywood, you know, big superstars to uh, be a part of a faith-oriented type movie? Because I know in the past, man, they wouldn't want to do anything. That's like right. That uh, yeah. of, is that changing a little bit? Yeah, you guys have been around that where it was like taboo mm -hmm. to touch some of these faith-based um, stories. And so, you know, a great thing last night, um, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're into our free media uh, campaign and, and Hillary was on The Tonight Show. And so I watched it and um, she was great. And so it's like, 
you know, uh, uh, Jimmy Fallon had no problem promoting it and talking about it. And she had no problem. Like it, it was just some big Hollywood mainstream movie that that is like anything else. But yet what's wonderful about it is here is a movie that is central to our faith and to our values and and a true life story. And um, and it's competing on a level as far as gaining um, actor attention and notoriety on a level of any other story, but yet it is centrally rooted mm -hmm. in our faith and our values. So, and that's been the dream, right? It's been the dream for 20 years. Course, yeah. and, well, uh, and now here we are and it's happening. And, and, and <clears throat> in fact, for, you know, this is a small thing, but for us nerds behind the scene, we kind of celebrate the wins. If we get on a late night talk show, it's like a huge thing. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, so, so Hillary, Hillary was on uh, last night and then Alan is on tomorrow night. On the same show, and so, oh my gosh! And so that's the, the forget about getting one hit, but the fact you get both of your actors on separate nights is is pretty special. It just shows you how strong um, they are as as actors as well as um, the movie itself. And so um, I'm love. I'm gonna I'm gonna look forward to this next week leading up to the opening and just having them. They're so proud of the movie. So as you guys know, it's tough to get talent to want to really. Um, uh, uh, their full force behind, especially if you're dealing with faith-based um, issues and themes. Mm -hmm. They're so proud of it. And so they are going nice. to be shouting this movie from the rooftops. So that's going to be a joy and a treat to be able to watch. And I think, too, the fact that you have a little girl in here and this disease and then people <laughs> working around to make and not only for her disease to get that better and to contribute to that, but for the miracle that had to happen. And, you know, what? who doesn't today want a miracle? I mean, who, I, mm -hmm. you meet more and more people. You hear more and more people saying they're so depressed with the world the way it is and, and downtrodden and no one helps other people. So whenever you have people do help others, it's a big deal. It's a big story. So if this is perfect timing, Kevin. Yeah, no, and, and and again, all of it true. Actually, what's funny is in the true life story, um, some of the things that you, you always hear stories where, oh, filmmakers had to um, embellish to make things a little bit more extraordinary. Uh, in the true life story, we actually had to dial some things back, <laughs> you know, which is really rare because it was so extraordinary what Sharon uh, Stevens did. Um, and Sharon is, is who Hillary Swank plays. Um, that we were like, okay, this is this is unbelievable what she did, and so let's let's kind of pull it back a little bit, so so it's not so extraordinary that it pulls people out of the movie. Wow! Um, and, and when you have that kind of source material to kind of glean from, you're like, okay, this is going to be something special. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, look, it's it's a time timing is everything in telling these stories, and just feel like the timing is right. Uh, well, for this one, Cer certainly when we came out with Jesus Revolution, I mean, you look at the timing of the release of that. Yes. Oh, yeah. People accused us of planning revivals at college <laughs> universities. I'm like, first of all, we're not that smart. <laughs> we and second of all, you don't have that kind of control over God. <laughs> you imagine? But if we were getting accused of starting revivals. I said, first of all, if we're going to be accused of anything, I'll take that. Yeah, so that's exactly. A good uh, but we're we're definitely not that smart. So uh, the, the fact that it happens, it just shows that uh, you know God's timing is on it, and and we're trying to honor Him with the stories that we're telling. You know, Kingdom, yeah. as you guys know, Kingdom Story Company is showcasing. Uh, the power of the gospel through true life stories. That's what our mission is. Um, although we do veer away from that uh, next Christmas when we do best Christmas pageant ever, but that's a whole another topic of conversation. And, uh, uh, but it's yeah, exciting. It's exciting oh, to have. Oh, too bad you have an automatic audience with Dallas Jenkins maybe. <laughs> yeah, oh, we have that. <laughs> we have that. And the book is huge. I mean, that book has sold so many units. The story is so compelling. Uh, we just wrapped filming like a week and a half ago. Wow. And performances are out of this world, out of this world. Um, going to be fun to talk about that in November with the cast that we got with Judy Greer and, and Pete Holmes and then Lauren yeah. Graham. Yeah. Lauren Graham, who everybody loves. Um, uh, oh, my goodness. It's going to be fun. And the kids are outstanding. So, yeah. Now, we got a full slate, full lineup this year. So, it's, wow. it's a lot of fun to do this. Wow. I was on Politically Incorrect with Lauren Graham years ago. And she's wonderful. She's a fun person. She's so. very fun. Yes, yeah, yeah. sweetheart. Yeah, she was. She was really great. I hope we hope to do some more stuff with her in the future. She was just really sweet and lovely to work with. And then you have another movie coming out. That I know, really uh, some Hero, which comes out April twenty sixth. Um, never done this before, where we've had two. Actually, I don't even think we've ever released two in a year. 
And now we've got two in two months and five in a calendar or four in a calendar year and five in a 12 month period, uh, wow. which is absolutely unbelievable. Um, but Unsung Hero is so good. So good. It's one of yeah. my favorite movies yes. that we've helped put out into the universe. The small yeah. bones have knocked it out of the park. Um, every time I watch it, I, I cry my eyes out. I laugh. I mean, it's just a journey that you want to take over and over. Obviously, their faith journey is at the central of this um entire story and so people will <laughs> are gonna love it and people are i mean it's we're doing pre-release screenings right now and just standing ovations all over the place it's one of those i can only imagine type of feel good story it is, it is definitely one of those and yeah. to have to have the kid that grew up play the father oh my gosh Luke, yeah <laughs> and now I, yeah, yeah yeah joel does great i mean yeah. at first um i showed up on set uh for a day i had a little cameo in it and and so joel was directing me and then i'm looking at him playing his dad i'm like dude you're really you're freaking me out right now <laughs> like, i don't understand i know that. i know you're like you're good. playing your dad that's really strange. <laughs> there's an actress here that looks just like your sister, Rebecca St. James. Yes. I don't understand. Like, this is really weird. All this whole thing is really weird, but they yes. really pulled it off. They did such a great job on the film. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. Unsung Hero, April 26th. Theaters everywhere. We will definitely see that, too. And that, and that again, we were going to ask about that Kingdom story. That just shows how God is working on behalf of you and, and mm -hmm. the, the brother and brothers and how you guys have came together with this dream and really... It's even gone further, I think, than what you got to have this many good movies released. You usually have a good one, and then there's a couple of misses, and then you have a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Come, that's pretty much what happens. <laughs> no <laughs> misses here. <laughs> it, uh, no, I know. I'm like, okay. Um, we, we kind of, Andy and I kind of laugh about it. We're like, okay. Let's see, we got five. If just one of them works, that'll be good. Uh, I mean, no, here's the thing. You know what's funny is no matter what, um, even though we have this volume, the fear of the independent film producer always exists. It never goes yeah. away, meaning we're nervous about our films releasing all the way up till the night before. <laughs> no. And people think like, oh, you got Lionsgate, you got this, like you, you're, you're set, you got it made. I'm like, man, no, we work just as hard as we did on, I can only imagine, and before that on, on the smaller films. And, and uh, we, we are nervous just as much. <laughs> yes, yes. And, um, and with good reason. Um, I'm going to go back in history a little bit because I remember when you were the producers on The Visitation with oh, Edward Furlong. Remember it was that? Way back. Oh, way yeah, back. Wow. Way back. The Visitation. What a, what a, here, the fun story about that, we did that movie for like two and a half million bucks. I shot it on 35 millimeter, which I, I couldn't even. I couldn't even tell you how to do that in today's climate. No. Um, uh, but what a great, you know, I love some of the early films because what they show is that um, uh, it can be done. Like it, it, it yeah. has to start somewhere, right? Like this whole movement of, of movies that are centered in faith, being in theaters, released by major studios, um, has to start somewhere. Like this doesn't start overnight out of thin air. No, and, and some of those early trailblazing movies, <laughs> some of them were good, some of them were not, were but not that's good. The point. You were a trailblazer even then, and you had a vision, and that was the when it was not popular to be doing faith films. It was, <laughs> no, it, it was you wasn't doing Edward it was, on, you know, it was taboo. Yeah, yeah that, but you were fighting a harder battle even back then because. They were going to have them on the late night talk shows, you know. No. And now they were like, can you guys change like the name of your movie? Can you change your production company? Can we just change the title? Can we change everything so that I can like, um, or, and maybe I should change my name. <laughs> like, it was just so not appropriate to be yeah. in a movie. But so now it's now. Yeah, and it was. It was actually for your name, you know. It, it was actually a little tougher for you when you guys were starting uh, up because film was actually more expensive than what people can make their movies with today. I mean, I, you know, I'm familiar with a movie that literally they did for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and they made almost over ten million dollars. So the the cost of entry is much lower now than it was before. It's mind-blowing to me that we got anything made back then, especially because there was no digital. I mean, it was exactly. like we were yeah. shooting movies on shoestrings that you had to shoot on film and because there was no other outlet to be able to do it. 
And so now, I mean, you could literally shoot a movie on your iPhone if you got creative enough and um, and edit it. And it's all it's it's, it's incredible. And so it's um, it, you know, it's a fun time to be able to look back on that period and yeah. to see how far we've come. Yeah. And and the older I get, the more I want to encourage younger filmmakers like, you know, hopefully they don't get so complacent because it is so easy uh, <laughs> that they don't have to work so hard for it. Right. Yeah. Um, but man, if you if you believe in something big mm -hmm. enough, you got to be able to suffer through the failures oh, to be fine. able to find the successes right. down the road, and that's just the way it works. Yeah. And um, and I tell people, I'm like, look, Lionsgate didn't just hand us a deal; we had to actually go out and prove it. And we mm -hmm. proved it with I can only imagine. Yeah. Uh, we had to go raise all the money for that film. Uh, nobody would take meetings with us. I mean, we were just as taboo as anything else. And then uh, all of a sudden the movie worked and then everybody wants to do business with you. And it's the same today. I mean, if, if I didn't have a hit and I, this is what my life's calling was, what the Lord wanted me to do, that'd be the advice I would give. Go raise the money, find your story mm -hmm. and tell it with excellence and then find an audience. I love that. I love that. Oh, Kevin, thank you. This has been such a great interview, and I love to be able to go back and talk about Revit from the beginning to the end because you're right. It inspires other filmmakers today that it's not going to just be given to you. That you know, yeah. You go in there and prove yourself, especially in this industry. It's a hard, it's a, competitive it's a one. hard one to crack. Now, this has been great. This has been like a high school reunion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially since I was with you on the visitation. I remember that said it was fun. It was fun going back and doing that. Listen, you've got to come to Capernaum Studios. I want you to come see what we've got. We've got the yeah, LED sure. and all fun, fun things. So, and uh, just excited to have you on, Kevin. Congratulations for this movie. We're going to support you in any way we can, especially Ordinary Angels, Unsung Heroes, and all the other ones you've got. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, thank guys. You. And we're I probably going to have you back several times because you have so many movies coming out. So we'll have to have you on. <laughs> Just once we want you on for the Christmas time. one. We want you on for the Christmas pageant, yes, okay? Yes. Promise no doubt. Happen. We will definitely make it happen. <laughs> All right. God bless. All right. Thank God bless you. you guys. I just love him. What a great interview. I wanted to go longer, didn't you? <laughs> I sure did. But but that's okay because we're going to have him on several more times, aren't we? Yes, we are. We are. You know, Isaac, I am so proud of the fact that we can sit here and support a filmmaker, a producer, an actor, someone who has been in the business since the 90s and has really, like he said, gone from struggling to even get a faith-based yeah. movie made and, and gone through the ropes. And now he said he can speak to younger filmmakers and people about what it takes to get in this business and don't take it for yeah. granted and it's hard work. But when, more even than that, aren't we excited that we've got some films that we can be proud of to promote I that know. are competing with the Hollywood I movies know. in the box office, right? I mean, oh, we're not going to oh, have a little Christian film. No, it's competing <laughs> with the big ones. It's a very special time, I think, right now uh, that these opportunities are coming to us. Absolutely. So we are excited for you to, you know, go see this movie and support yes. it. We hope you will. And thank you for supporting Faith on Film. Amen. And that's the end of our show today. So we'll see you next week. Write to us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. Also, go to our YouTube channel, Faith on Film TV, and hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications on our latest Faith on Film shows. <laughs>